Mark Rober recently tested Tesla's auto drive feature, and let's just say it didn't go well for him, the Tesla, or the mannequin behind the wall he hit. The internet is torn. Was this on purpose, or did Mark do this for science sake? Either way, his reputation definitely took a hit from this. On March 15th, Mark posted this video right here called, Can You Fool a Self-Driving Car? And considering his background in science, it's obvious that he was probably able to do that. I'm in my Tesla on autopilot going 40 miles an hour towards a fake Wiley Coyote Roadrunner painted wall. Please stop, please stop. Holy and I'm doing this to see if Tesla's autopilot can be tricked because it famously only relies on simple cameras to navigate the world as opposed to much more expensive tech. And that more expensive tech is exactly what everybody on the internet is taking issue with. The whole point of the video was to test out Tesla's LiDAR scanning technology, something that's been called into question many times in the past. But much of the data Tesla submitted has been hidden from public view because the company considers it proprietary. To unlock it, the journal gathered reports from individual states and matched them with the crash data Tesla submitted to NHTSA and found that long-standing concerns about the autopilot technology are showing up on America's roads. Of the 1,000 plus crashes Tesla submitted so far, the journal pieced together 222 and found that 44 of them occurred when Tesla's in autopilot veered suddenly. 31 occurred when a Tesla in autopilot failed to stop or yield for an obstacle in front of it. Mark Rober wanted to test these because Tesla has self-driving, which is apparently released five years after autopilot and much more hands-free. For whatever reason, Mark wanted to use Tesla's five years old autopilot for his safety tests over their much newer self-driving capabilities. So the alternative is to use autopilot, and that assumes the driver isn't paying much attention, and while the downside is you get way more phantom braking and false positives, oh, 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 that was ridiculous. The upside is you're less likely to be charged with vehicular man Slide. Because you can see here on autopilot, it actually stopped in time. Came up with the six part LiDAR versus camera head to head face off, culminating in a history making first Tesla versus cartoon physics test. And he pits it up against a Lexus running Luminar's version of autopilot. Spoiler alert, the Tesla didn't fare well. First test is just kids standing in the road. The testing speed was 40 miles an hour, which meant the LiDAR would have to detect the kid and then slam on the brakes at least 60 feet in front of it. And it turned out that's all it needed. Now it was Tesla's turn. All right, we are up to speed. And with just simple cameras, the Tesla was speeding fast. Oh no. Oh god! <laughs> oh no! Now that clip alone divided the internet into two groups, those who were with Mark and those who thought he set the whole thing up. But what was most talked about on the internet conversations after this video is this next clip that Mark posted. Scientific papers have actually been written on this exact scenario, debating theoretically what the Tesla would do. But we were here once and for all to silence all the debates with cold hard data. Now, as you can see as a human driver, while that looks sort of convincing, the image processing in our brains is advanced enough that we pick up on minor visual inconsistencies and we wouldn't hit it. And as for the LiDAR, it isn't looking at what image is printed on the wall. So this sort of just looks like a wall, which would make this the easiest test of the day. And as I suspected, <sighs> handled it with no problem. So the question was, would the Tesla detect and stop for this Wiley Coyote style painted wall that was hiding yet another child staring at nothing during what might be his last minutes on earth? Oh boy. All right, here we go. And so I steeled myself and accelerated the Tesla up to the 40 miles an hour. And as the wall crept closer and closer without moving an inch, Holy crap. the question was if the Tesla would detect it in time to step on the brakes. And it turned out... Holy me me. So I can definitively say for the first time in the history of the world, Tesla's optical camera system would absolutely smash through a fake wall without even a slight tap on the brakes. You cannot tell me that Tesla didn't do these tests themselves. The internet did their thing and pointed out right away that just before Mark hit the wall, the rainbow that appears when autopilot is engaged actually turned off. Something that can only mean that either Mark or Tesla was up to some pretty nefarious actions. That or... I, maybe I just don't know a damn thing about engineering, which I don't. I'm just here to report the drama. And I don't have a leg in this race, but I am going to tell you what the people on the internet said on Tesla's side of this and Mark Rober's response and how he kept his video up. So without moving an inch, Holy crap. the question was... There it is. Right here, Mark Roper reaches over with his hand on the bottom left of the screen there and enables autopilot. We could see that with the Rainbow Road and the blue lines. Now that's interesting because we just heard Mark Roper say for the remainder of the tests, we're going to use autopilot. 
And this is where a lot of people are getting suspicious. Was this potentially a paid partnership between Mark Roper and Luminar? After all, Luminar technology is clearly featured in the video because their vehicle is branded and what appears to be a Luminar employee is driving the vehicle. Now this is potentially brilliant by Luminar because Luminar shows up with their vehicle doing their experiment in their own vehicle and they never touch or talk about the Teslas. They're just showing their own technology. This is a brilliant wash the hands move by Luminar because Mark Roper could end up getting left holding the bag if Tesla ends up suing Mark for false and misleading advertising under the Lanham Act. Now, Mark says he has no affiliation with any of the companies that he had tested in this video. They had just given him the cars for him to test out of the goodness of their hearts. But Mark's a smart guy, so I'm perplexed while he would do all the brand marketing, product placement, and clever editing for the other company. Wait a minute. In the frames we saw, autopilot was off. And take a look at this. In any Luminar shot, Luminar is driving the car, whereas when it's the Tesla, Mark is driving the car and Luminar is nowhere to be seen. Maybe because Luminar knows that this is a legal hot potato and kind of unfair to Tesla. But take a look at this Luminar ex example here. In this, you'll notice the Luminar branding on the car, the LiDAR on the vehicle, and the person who's driving wearing a Luminar shirt, potentially because they're an employee. Now, wait a second. Luminar isn't disclosed as a paid sponsor in the video, but we do have a shout out thanks to Luminar for letting us test their vehicle. Luminar is obviously using this experiment to advertise their business, but it's kind of a sleazy comparison. Mark Roper is using this experiment to advertise his business, get two free boxes with Crunch Labs or whatever, slash LiDAR, crunchlabs.com slash LiDAR. Now this is fascinating because now you have two business interests benefiting off of a smear off of Tesla, which is quite frankly the basis for Lanham Act lawsuits. And this is the kind of opinion a lot of people have on the internet that Mark was pretty unfaithful in his testing. At the end of the day, tit for tat, people can believe that Mark did this for nefarious reasons or they can believe Mark who said he did this in the name of science. But let's hear from Mark. You posted on Twitter where you said, here's like the, here's the raw footage. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain what it is that we're seeing and what you're what you're trying to explain is happening in that you said not I, sure why it disengages 17 frames uh before hitting the wall but my feet weren't touching the brake or gas so i think people were saying that i was manually just drove it through because yep. 17 frames by the way is like less than a half of a second before it hits the wall again my high pop I don't know why it would disengage i was not pulling on the steering wheel and by the way even if i did disengage it it's it's less than a half a second before you go off the, the outcome would not be different i uh, my guess is maybe the sensors the ultrasonic sensors which i think are on the bumper uh they probably just disengage if they sense that something big is there and it just stops being in the uh, self-driving mode or autopilot whatever you want to call it there have been people that say that it looks like you may have had multiple takes um, or possibly gone through the wall multiple times. Were there multiple takes? What can yeah, you, so you give any insight there? there? Was. I mean, this is like what you put in end video. So we, the first day we went out there, I think you can even see it. There was a, we didn't have like the styrofoam wall. It was just like a, a vinyl sheet. We, yeah, we did a take. It went right through. I think that was the one that maybe was at 40 miles an hour or something, but it was just like, instead of cutting through it, like which would visually look cool, it just kind of tore the side and like a little flap came up. So it was like, that was a very interesting finding that it actually worked. So you'll see it going through the wall, but it's more of a flap. And then we're like, holy crud, I can't believe that really worked. And then I don't know, like three weeks later, we went back out time when, when schedule permitted, this time with like a, a styrofoam wall, because I thought it'd be funny if it's like, well, now that it goes through the walls, we should have like a fun cutout as it goes through. So I guess in the edit, then we used the start of one of those clips. So so it went through the wall twice. So the clip that you posted online or on, on Twitter was the one where you actually, the raw of you actually going through it the second time? Yes, that's the second okay. time. Regarding Luminar, uh, there have been a lot of people asking what kind of role they played. Right, The description of the video says they provided the, provided the car for testing. Did they have any say in the edit? Did they have any no say edit. in the No, they didn't see the edit. Uh, yeah, but I really want to clear this. Luminar gave us no money. They had no say in the edit. They did not approach us. Uh, 
Uh, they were just a car technology I know that used LiDAR. So I reached out to them and say, hey, will you let us borrow some cars? Uh, and then they let us use the cars. So we didn't pay them to come. Use, they did not pay us. They had no say. And we didn't know what would happen either, by the way. And we told mm -hmm. them, look, if your LiDAR fails one of these, it goes in the video. And if Tesla would have passed all of them, by the way, that would have gone in the video. Like, I'm very agnostic. I really just wanted to see what would happen. So truly, I don't have a horse in this race. Once again, it's like based off of these accusations. Do you or anyone close to you have any Luminar stock? I do not own any Luminar stock, or I do not know of anyone close to me who owns any Luminar stock. Absolutely. And I know you said you, you love Tesla. Just to confirm, do you have any options or puts on Tesla? I have no options on Tesla. I have no puts on Tesla. I am just... There's no financial anything in here at all, at all, 100%. I'll go into quarter law. The final little bit in his response here is his response to why Luminar removed the video off their website. Mark, but kind of the last two things I'll hit on. One, do you have any comment or reaction to Luminar removing the, the link to your video from their website? Uh, I believe it was as of this morning. I, someone, I think someone said that they had posted it. My guess is they took it down because they... Aren't, we were very clear with them, like, you aren't allowed to use this at trade shows. This isn't part of your marketing material. Like, we're not, this isn't a puff piece for you. We just want to borrow the car and whatever happens, happens. So I, my guess is they felt bad and realized that's a bad look if they are posting it. But we told them, like, this is not for your marketing materials. We are just using your car for our video. So if it's down, I'm guessing that's why they took it down out of respect for us. At the end of the day, Mark Rober posted a video titled, Can I Fool a Tesla? I think he probably accepted that as a challenge. And given his background in science and engineering, of course he could. He knows everything about LiDAR and camera technology. That being said, a lot of people on the internet think that the Tesla stocks dropping around the same time his video got released is in direct correlation with his video. You know, and I just don't want to make too many comments about that. I'm not a political guy. I don't want to make political content, but I'll say this. I'm sure that Tesla stocks are dropping for an entire different reason. That being said, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Do you think Mark Rober is being bias in his test in these cars or do you think that this was just science showing exactly what would happen especially if a smart guy was to be able to trick a computer if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and if you don't follow well the subscribe button is right next to the like button so uh you know and i'll see you in the next video peace